Today with Catherine Ruinala. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm giving him all the thanks and all the praise and all the glory. I've been so enjoying getting your testimonies. People sending, uh, uh, giving me testimonies about last week, how they were healed and delivered, uh, people set free, uh, numerous people giving their hearts to Jesus online. Praise the Lord. Uh, I just love hearing the testimony. So if you do have a testimony of a miracle or healing, big or small, we love to hear the testimony. So please, if you could just jot it down or come and tell us, uh, we love to celebrate what the Lord has done. He is such a wonderful, wonderful father. Even as I walked out uh, last Friday night, people were coming to tell me online that uh, someone had been healed of numbness in their fingers as we'd prayed, that someone else, uh, a word of knowledge, I think it was, maybe it was Abby, gave a word of knowledge about arthritis and they were delivered and healed and uh, and, and many, many, many other wonderful things are, of course, happening in the building, but it's also great online. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Do we have any pressing you must tell in, uh, if you've got 30, se- 30 second testimony, come on, man, I'd love to hear it. Come and tell us what's happened. Hallelujah. Come on up here. Praise the Lord. If you've got a, a quick one, come and uh, jump up and we'll, we'll hear what the Holy Spirit's done. Hey, what's your name? Hey, how you doing? Hello, very, very good bless. Uh, interesting story. Um, going back about nine weeks ago, I think now, I was uh, going mountain bike riding on a Sunday night, 6.30 at night, and um, uh, at, near the Gap, like at a uh, reserve, and like no one really goes there. Anyway, cut a long story short, I crashed my bike, like a uh, bicycle, um, pretty hard and fast, and smashed my clavicle and six broken ribs and a punctured lung. And yeah, and I'm, I'm lying there on my back for about 25 seconds, like looking up, I think it was 25 minutes actually, looking up to the canvas of the forest, going, uh, what are we now? And lo and behold, a uh, off duty female paramedic comes along and rescues me. Yeah, and then, yeah, and then after hospital, after a week in hospital, I um, met the crew here from Hope that go to and help the homeless and that, and they said a few prayers for me and that, and now I've got full range back again. (laughs) That's so wonderful. Praise the Lord. I love hearing stories like that. Come on. I know you've got a testimony. I hope I don't cry saying this one. I, 15 years ago, I had, um, sorry, yeah, 15 years ago, I had someone speak a cancer curse over me and they did it over the phone. And when it happened, I felt a really heavy, oppressive cloak come around me and squeeze tight 15 years ago. And I, over the years, had, you know, prayer, healing, deliverance. Um, courts of heaven, the whole lot. But every time I'd get in fear, I'd get that feeling come around me. I couldn't shake it. I just couldn't shake it. Last Friday night, I went down and I got I got super glued to that altar, super glued to that altar. And I, when I got up, pulled myself together. This was a Friday night. And then on Sunday, God, I was in the garden hanging out with my cats and God goes, Tiani, You know what I did for you? I gave you a brand new reality, a brand new tangible reality. You've been healed, delivered, restored and set free and I've given you a physical thing to hold on to for the rest of your life. Praise God. You also had some physical healings happened as well, hey? (laughs) It was a it was a huge major surgery on me. I tell you, my shoulder got healed. My I had I've had two fractured skulls and hearing issues, and that's cleaning. Like I can hear better than I have before, and a whole bunch of a whole bunch of other things. And I'm just eternally grateful. Yeah, yeah. praise the Lord. That's awesome. Praise God. He can make all things beautiful in his time. Nothing is impossible for God. And that's the good news of the gospel, hey, that he is able to restore everything. You can bring him your brokenness and he'll bring you, he'll give you beauty for ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, the garment of praise instead of the spirit of heaviness. Hallelujah. Um, I want to read to you a beautiful passage from Isaiah 55. We can, the whole chapter is beautiful, but we can start at verse 6. 
If you've got your Bibles, you can have a look along with me. Just don't get distracted if you're looking at an iPhone. Hallelujah. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked abandon his way and the unrighteous person his thoughts and let him return to the Lord and he will have compassion on him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. Isn't that the truth? Our righteousness is not from us. I cannot claim to be righteous by the way I've behaved. You know, I, I can't claim righteousness because I know I've had react, bad reactions. I know the things that I've done that have been displeasing to the Lord. The Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. There's none righteous. No, not one. And yet we can call on the Lord, we can repent and receive from him the, the magnificent pardon of heaven that not only forgives our sin, but takes it away, gives us a clean heart. And he says he'll never remember our sins again. He, he, our sins he will remember no more. Hallelujah. So every morning when I wake up, I can wake up and give thanks. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. Thank you for the sacrifice of Jesus. Thank you that you love me so much. Thank you that you abundantly pardon. And I do keep short accounts with the Lord. I talk to him about all the things. And if I've had a bad attitude or if I've, I've said something or done something or thought something or not done something, I talk to the Lord about it. And you might say, well, you don't need to do all of that. But because of this relationship with him, I find it's, it's really healthy for me to be very honest with the Lord and say, God, I, I'm so sorry that I hurt your heart there. I'm so sorry that I, 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 I was leaning on myself that I didn't ask you about that. I'm sorry, Lord. And, and I don't then walk around in guilt and condemnation, but I, I just remind myself, thank you that you forgive me. Thank you, Lord, that you give me power. Thank you that you're sharpening my conscience so that next time I'll look to you for wisdom in, that, in a situation like that. Thank you, Lord, for your mercies that are new every morning. Thank you that I'm clean and I'm forgiven and that you abundantly pardon. Hallelujah. Oh, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Because our, our relationship with Jesus isn't just about theory. It is a genuine intimate invitation into personal interaction with him, where we can talk to him, where we can sing to him, where we can give him thanks. We can interact with him and talk to him from our hearts. Hallelujah. And he wants to talk back. He wants to speak to you. He wants to whisper to your heart. He wants to confirm his word to you. He wants to speak to you. Who knows what it is to know the voice of God speaking to their hearts? Well, the Bible says his sheep hear his voice. <coughs> Not everyone hears the same way. We don't all... Um, we're not all built the same way. Who knows? We are all uniquely and magnificently, marvelously formed by the Spirit of God. And we're all unique. But as children of God, we all have the capacity to hear His voice, whether it be just a knowing on the inside or Him quickening a scripture to us as we read and we, we just feel the Spirit of God lighted up to us. Hallelujah. Or as we're talking to him, we, we sense his smile, we sense his love, we feel the presence of God. He is a living God, hallelujah, that we don't have to have an intellectual relationship with. But the Father is looking for worshippers who worship him in spirit and truth, which is those that will look to him with expectation and the Holy Spirit gives us supernatural enlightenment of his truth of who he is so that our hearts are provoked to a response. That our response is not just 
um, dry or intellectual, but the Holy Spirit wants to provoke our hearts with a, a revelation of His Word, a revelation of His truth. He wants to speak to you, to provoke in you a genuine love response so that you can have an embrace with God, that you can walk with Him and have a smile on your face that just knows. I know that he's with me. I know that I know that I know. Hallelujah. And that's available for anyone who'll ask. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he's near. Uh, let the wicked abandon his way and the unrighteous person his thoughts and let him return to the Lord and he will have compassion on him. I love that about God. You come and go, oh God, I'm sorry I did that. Oh, I'm sorry I did that. And the Lord looks at you and he loves you. He looks at you and he has compassion on you. He doesn't look at you and go, oh, when will I ever learn? He looks at you with compassion, with mercy. Hallelujah. And he will abundantly pardon. Praise the Lord. Who's grateful for that? Hooray. There you go. God just spoke to you and I just had a worship response. That's worship. Hallelujah. It doesn't have to be a, a hymn or a, a song. It's a genuine, a genuine. Oh, yay. Hooray. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father. That's the worship God's looking for. For your thoughts, for, excuse me, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there without watering the earth and making it produce and sprout and providing seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so will my word be which goes out of my mouth. It will not return to me empty without accomplishing what I desire and without succeeding in the purpose for which I sent it. For you will go out with joy and be led in peace and the mountains and the hills will break into shouts of joy before you and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. What a beautiful promise from the Lord. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. But as you lean into him, he will teach you his ways. He will share his thoughts with you. The Bible says that the works that Jesus did and greater works will they do. That is you. Hallelujah. And the works that Jesus did, he said this, I only do what I see my father doing. He was always listening. And because he said we will do the same works as he did, uh, because of his sacrifice, we've now been able to be brought near. And we can hear his voice like Jesus did. When Jesus taught the disciples to pray, he said, pray like this, our Father. As in that relationship you see me having with the Father, you are invited into that relationship. You can talk to him like I talk to him. And he will talk to you like he talks to me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That is a glorious privilege of being born again, of receiving mercy for sin, of receiving the Spirit of Christ living on the inside of us. Now, by faith, we have received the grace of God. Hallelujah. And we can walk by faith every day in this reality, knowing that because of what Jesus has done, I'm not just made acceptable, like we think about it in the English, but we've actually been joined to him. We've been brought right into the inner circle. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but when I was at school, I was not on the inner circle of the in crowd. In fact, we'd have, I went to a private girls' school and they had all these little groups. And it was, it was so clear. I mean, even that we'd have the common room in grade 12 and you'd have the the um, maths physics group over here and the uh, horsey group over here and the, the really fashionable, clever, pretty ones over there. And then you'd have the, the ones that, um, you know, would let anybody in because they were nice. That was my group. <laughs> um, but I wasn't even really in there, you know. And, and I didn't know any other believers in, in the school or in the, in the class. But, you know... 
when we come into the kingdom, when we receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, we get brought into the inner circle. It doesn't get any closer. We get to be seated with him on his throne. <laughs> like in, 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 so in that we are actually part of his body. Doesn't get closer than that. And the Holy Spirit wants you to enjoy it. He doesn't want you to have it this whole time and not enjoy it. Not enjoy the beautiful opportunity to have fellowship with Him. Hallelujah. And I believe there's a release of the Spirit right now to bring supernatural revelation of the basics of what it means to be saved. What it means to be joined to Christ. And the people of God are going to start talking to Him again. They're going to start hearing his voice, enjoying his company, moving as he moves, hallelujah, and doing the greater works that were promised, hallelujah, uh, not out of arrogance or self-righteousness, but out of a delight. It's no longer me who lives, but Christ who lives in me, and Christ in me is dreaming and planning of doing great things, hooray, praise the Lord. The word of the Lord sent forth through our mouths as we hear it and believe it with a supernatural knowing as the Spirit of God quickens us to believe and receive by faith the Word implanted on the inside of us. Freely we receive and freely out of the abundance of our heart, the mouth speaks. And when the mouth speaks, uh, the Bible talks about it as the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. So if you've any doubt that you are uh, anointed and qualified to speak the word of God that will be sent forth and accomplish what it's sent forth to do, then you just have a look at the armor of God. The sword of the spirit is not something that the Lord wields. It's something that you wield. It's a two-edged sword. He spoke it in his mouth and we speak it in our mouth. Hallelujah. And as the word gets sent forth, the Bible says that it will accomplish what it's sent forth to do. Hallelujah. And that's exciting. And so this week I had the joy of spending some time with some of the interns from the academy. That was fun. Hallelujah. And they're just always delightful, filled with, um, filled with faith and joy. And they were asking some questions. They were asking, uh, tell us about some of the crazy miracles that you've seen. And, and that's, always, that's always a fun conversation because as we think about and remember the good things that God's done, faith comes afresh. Hallelujah. The Bible actually says that in Psalms that we are to dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. We're not to remember all the, all the sad, bad things, the sins and the regrets, because God doesn't remember your sins, so you're not allowed to either. So if, it's a, if it, those sins are turning up in your head again and trying to make you feel shame or regret, they are the seed of the enemy tr looking to be planted in. And you have to go, no, -uh -uh, I'm not having that. I reject that. No, I'm th that's not in the mind of God. So it's not going to be in my mind either. Hallelujah. God's not thinking about that. His thoughts are higher than my thoughts. And I, I'm, I now have the mind of Christ. So no, he doesn't remember that. So neither will I. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You've got to guard the garden of your heart. What seeds get planted? We want the seed of the word of the Lord planted on the inside of us. We want to water it with thanksgiving and we want to guard it with all diligence because out of our heart will flow the wellsprings of life. What you meditate on is what you'll talk about. Isn't that the truth? <laughs> What you're reading is what will come out of your mouth. What you're watching, what you're researching, what you're looking into is going to come out of your mouth. And the Lord wants your garden, your heart to be filled with the word of the Lord. Wants to be filled with things that are pure and lovely and of a good report. The things that heaven is talking about. The word of the Lord, because it's the word of the Lord that will go forth and accomplish what it's sent forth to do. Hallelujah. And so I was thinking about some of these stories and... Um, one of, the, one of the wildest ones I've seen, and I've seen some wonderful things. I just love what the Lord does. He's so creative. 
but it was actually here in Brisbane. I was ministering at a, a little church and many years ago, and a man came, uh, called Robert came up and he had um, a problem with his foot. I can't remember what it was, but some pain and an issue in his foot. And he came for prayer and I just sent forth the word of healing. I said, in the name of Jesus, be healed. And as I did, without even touching him, the power of God hit him and he flew backwards and the sole of his shoe blew off. And he was healed. Hallelujah. I've got the photograph. He had to get some gaffer tape and tape it up to, to be able to drive the bus after church. But that, um, that's un, that unusual sign and wonder gave him so much faith that after the service, he came up and he said, okay, I've got two nephews that are in hospital. They're both in a coma from an accident. Uh, can we pray for them? Because if God can touch me like this and look at my shoe, if he can do that, he can do that for them. And so uh, we sent forth the word of healing to those young men in the hospital. And at the very moment we sent forth the word, they both woke up out of their comas. Hallelujah. Because the word of the Lord sent forth will accomplish what it's sent forth to do. Hallelujah. Psalm 103 verse 20 says this. Bless the Lord, you his angels, mighty in strength, who perform his word. Obeying the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you, he, all you his angels who serve him, doing his will. This is really interesting. Who knows that God has multitudes of angels uh, that are ministering spirits that are, are moved by the word of God. They obey the voice of God. They, they obey the word of God. But it says here that... The angels perform his word. They hearken to the voice of his, uh, uh, to the voice of the Lord and they perform his word. They obey the word and they, they go and they perform what's being sent. So when you begin to speak the word of the Lord, the angels are activated to get involved and to, and to start uh, moving. Hallelujah. Setting things up and, and performing what the word of the Lord uh, is and, and seeing it come to pass. Hallelujah. It's obviously, it's the power of God. God, but uh, God has his angels get in and uh, perform the word. Hallelujah. And so as we speak the word of the Lord, these angels are sent on assignment to perform it and to set it up. So praise God, we can begin to declare things that the word says. So it's like the Bible tells us that the same works that Jesus did and greater works will they do. For I go to be with the Father. So you can take that and you go, yeah, yeah, that's good. I'd like to see that. Or you can take it and begin to say, yes, God, that's your will. You said whatever we ask according to your will. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare the same works that you did and greater works will be done as I minister because it's no longer me who lives but Christ who lives in me. I'm going to see the greater works of Jesus done. And I, I remember years ago I, I just began to, to get really specific with these declarations, sending out the word of the Lord. And I remember reading about Peter and um, as he'd walk past, remember his shadow, uh, the people would line up and they'd say to themselves, if I could just, if his shadow could just fall on me, I'll get healed. And you know, that's much like the woman with the issue of blood. She determined in her heart, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I'm going to be healed. It was a point of contact for her to release her faith. Hallelujah. And, and this was a point of contact for the people to release their faith. But uh, Peter was carrying uh, an anointing. He was an ambassador of Christ. Hallelujah. And we know, 2 Corinthians 5, that we also are ambassadors of Christ. So I began to declare, thank you, Lord. I walk past people and they get healed. Hallelujah. Uh, you know, and God doesn't mind some bold declarations because he desires to see us go on from glory to glory and strength to strength. Hallelujah. And so I remember um, one of the other stories I was thinking about this week. I hadn't thought about it for ages, but I remember being in the US and, and walking into a meeting and a lady had was there and she was just waiting for the meeting to start and suddenly she felt a wind hit her and she felt the presence of God, surrounded by the presence of God. 
and she was instantly healed. And then she looked over and she realized that I'd just walked into the building and walked past her. And she said, she came to tell me, this is what happened. And I thought to myself, God, you're so kind because I've been declaring that's what happens. Hallelujah. And it's not that I'm something special, but it's the reality that God wants every one of us to be an ambassador of Christ that is believing that as we send forth the word, the angels are setting it up and going out, hearkening to the voice of his word and seeing those things come to pass. Hallelujah. Hey guys, do you know you can join us online every week from right here in Brisbane, Australia? I would love you to join our global church community. We live stream our church services right here from Brisbane every Friday and Sunday. Join your Christian brothers and sisters from around the world as we worship God together in spirit and truth. It's always so powerful. I was converted in worship as a young girl, so I know worship is a critical part of every believer's life. You'll get to hear from our prophetic team as well and the Sermon of the Week. You can find us every week on Facebook and YouTube and interact with Tom and our team as well as watching with others from around the world. You'll receive encouragement and become an encourager to others. You can receive prayer from the online community and activate your prayer life for others in the community. I love watching people praying for each other. Be a part of God's kingdom and experience the joy of receiving and then giving out and feel the love and power of God flowing through your life. You know, I love watching and seeing people interacting, caring for each other. And I love hearing the feedback about what God's been saying to you, about how the Word is touching and ministering to you. And just knowing where you're watching from and hearing your voice is so special to us. Find us this weekend at the ministry on YouTube or Facebook or on our Glory City Church website. I hope to see you this week online. The preceding paid program is sponsored by the friends and partners of Catherine Ruinala Ministries.